Welcome, Senator Sanders. Good to be with you, John. So one of the protest uh, anthems going on about Donald Trump is not my president. Is he your president? He won the election. I did everything I could to see that he uh, not become elected, uh, but he won. Uh, our job now is to hold him accountable, you know. Uh, Mr. Trump claimed that he was a champion of the working class of this country. And as you know, there are millions of people who are working longer hours for low wages. They don't have any health care. They can't afford to send their kids to college. They can't afford child care. If Mr. Trump, in fact, has the courage to take on Wall Street, to take on the drug companies, to try to work forward, go forward, to create a better life for working people, we will work with them on issue by issue. But if his presidency is going to be about discrimination, if it's going to be about scapegoating uh, immigrants or scapegoating uh, African Americans or Muslims, we will oppose him vigorously. A lot of Democrats are bereft at this outcome. Um, and it's not just a loss. It's there are people who are uh, shaken by this. What is your message to, to Democrats? Our message is that we have to do a lot of rethinking and ask ourselves, how does it happen that we have a president, a U.S. Senate, a House, and most governorships around this country are controlled by people who want to give huge tax breaks for billionaires, many instances want to cut Social Security and uh, Medicare and Medicaid, who do not even believe in the concept, the understanding of climate change, which is virtually unanimously agreed to by the scientific community. How does it happen that they win elections and Democrats lose. And I think what the conclusion is, is that Democrats have focused too much uh, with a liberal elite, which is raising incredible sums of money from wealthy people in the upper middle class, but has ignored to a very significant degree the working class and the middle class and low income people in this country. Look, the truth is, in my view, this country is moving toward an oligarchic form of society where a handful of billionaires and large corporations control the economy. As a result of Citizens United, they now control our political system where the Koch brothers or the billionaires can buy elections. They have undue influence over the media as well. And what the Democratic Party has got to say to working people, we are on your side. You know what? We are going to take on Wall Street. We're not going to take their money. We're going to lower the cost of prescription drugs. We're going to raise the minimum wage. We're not going to be the only country, major country on earth that doesn't guarantee health care to all people. You have got to make a decision which side you're on. Democrats have got to stand with the working families of this country. How do you read the election result? Was it a failure of Hillary Clinton to turn out Democrats to, to reach that voice, or was it a victory for Donald Trump? I think it was both. Uh, you know, I think uh, Speaker Gingrich is right. I think um, uh, Trump has very, very good political instincts. And what he understood, which many Democrats did not, is that if you are an average American out there making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year, you're working longer hours for low wages while almost all new income and wealth is going to the top 1%. You know what, John? You're pissed off. You're not happy about it. You're seeing your jobs go to China. Your kids can't afford to go to college. You can't buy the medicine that you need. You're worried to death about the future generation. Trump tapped that anger. Now, what our job is to do is to see what is his solutions. All right, he talked about the problems. Do you think throwing 20 million people off of health care is a solution to the health care crisis? Is giving hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the top two-tenths of 1% going to be the solution to income and wealth inequality? I don't think so. So our job is to say, Mr. Trump, you talked about being a champion of the working families. All right, now produce. Your rhetoric was great. Now do something. But we will not accept racism. We will not accept sexism or xenophobia. Do you think that his campaign was built on that? Newt Gingrich said that idea was garbage. No. Newt, I'm afraid Mr. Gingrich is wrong. Uh, I'm not saying that's all it was built on, but when you begin your campaign uh, by talking about throwing uh, 11 million people who are undocumented out of this country or building a wall uh, with Mexico or preventing uh, Muslims, <laughs> one of the largest religions in this country, uh, in the world, I should say, coming into this country, of course, to a large degree, it was built on that. Democrats going forward, should they pay attention to the way you ran your campaign or the way Hillary Clinton ran hers? I think it's time, it's not just Hillary Clinton's campaign, it's time to rethink whether or not the Democratic Party can simply spend so much time and energy raising money from wealthy people and putting ads on television. 
What we need to do is create a grassroots movement of millions of people who want to transform this country and make it the kind of country that we know that we can become. John, there is no rational reason why we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. No rational reason why we are the only major nation on earth that doesn't guarantee health care to all people. We don't have paid family and medical leave. Why are our kids going to see a lower standard of living than their parents? We can transform this country. We're a wealthy country. We can do it. But we have to have the courage to stand up to the billionaire class and corporate America and Wall Street to do it. All right, Senator Sanders, we're going to take a quick break. Then we're going to be back. We'll talk about your book a little bit. So we'll be back in a moment with more from Senator Sanders. Stay with us. And we're back with more from Senator Bernie Sanders, who is not only a former presidential candidate, but the author of Our Revolution. Senator, is this the user's manual, owner's manual for the new democratic revolution? I think it is, John. I mean, what I try to do there, half of the book is talking about the campaign, uh, why I ran for office, what we did well, what we didn't do well, the kind of excitement that we generated all over this country. But the other half of the book basically asks the question and tries to give the answer. How do we go forward? I am tired of watching television where, where, where you have a campaign which is about you know, Mr. Trump's attitude toward women versus Hillary Clinton's emails. You know what? Those are not the major issues facing America. The middle class of this country for 40 years has been in decline. Massive levels of income and wealth inequality. Why? What can we do about it? Why do we not guarantee health care to all people? How do we create a health care system that is cost effective and universal? What about a broken criminal justice system? Why do we have more people in jail than any other country? How do we invest in our young people so they don't end up uh, in jail. Uh, what about immigration reform? So what that is, it says we have got to have is a nation, and the media has got to do it as well, John, a serious discussion about the serious issues facing America. And by the way, what astounds me, and I hope this changes very quickly, is we now have a president-elect who actually does not believe that climate change is real. I worry very much what this means for our kids and our grandchildren and the future of this planet. And millions of people are going to have to tell them, Mr. Trump, you are dead wrong, and we're going to have to transform our energy system. But are you talking about marches on Washington? Are you, what's the, what's the, what's the action item for a nervous Democrat out there? Is to understand that on virtually every major issue, raising the minimum wage, climate change, pay equity for women, rebuilding our infrastructure, mm -hmm. making public colleges and universities tuition free, we are the majority. That is what the American people want. And the Democrats will win elections by pounding away on those issues and talking about not giving tax breaks to billionaires, undoing Citizens United, a disastrous Supreme Court decision. So we are the majority, and by the way, let's not forget Hillary Clinton did win more votes than, than Mr. Trump did. So pound away on the issues that bring people together, fight vigorously against all forms of bigotry. Who is the leader of the Democratic Party right now? Well, in the House, it's Nancy Pelosi. In the Senate, it is Chuck Schumer. And you're, you're okay with that? I mean, you think people should look to them for guidance, not or are there leaders. a lot of you? I'm not into leaders. Yeah. You know, I am into building a movement which transforms this country uh, and brings people together around an agenda that works for the middle class and working families of this country. Uh, don't follow leaders. The next question is, Donald Trump has talked about infrastructure, spending a lot of money, getting people working again. Sounds like something you could sign on to. If it is a sensible infrastructure program, absolutely. Our infrastructure, roads, bridges, water systems, airports, rail, collapsing, we can put millions of people to work rebuilding the infrastructure. And when you say sensible, it sounds like he's willing to spend a lot of money to do it, put people back to Let's work. Let's see That's the details, but in general, rebuilding our infrastructure is absolutely imperative for this country. Is there another area where you could find common yeah, cause? I am very proud. Look, I have been a leader in opposition to disastrous trade agreements for the first day that I was in the Congress. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the TPP is now dead. I wanted, a, I fought it. Uh, Hillary Clinton fought it. Mr. Trump is opposed to it. There's an area creating a trade policy so that corporate America starts investing in this country, not in China. Yeah, we can work together on that. All right, Senator Sanders, we'll look forward to having you back. Thanks so much for being here with us, and we'll be back in a moment.